What's up guys, it's Dan from Guitar Advice, and in this video, I'll be counting down my picks for the best electric guitars under $500. For each guitar we'll be looking at today, I'll be telling you why it made the list by highlighting some key factors such as specifications, performance, brand reputation, value, and just ultimately who I think the guitar is a good fit for. And since guitars are not a one-size-fits-all, I try my best to include guitars that are very different from each other, that way we can cover a wider range of preferences, meaning you're not going to find five Les Paul copies on this list. So hopefully you'll be able to find something on this list that's a good fit for you, regardless of what style or genre of music that you want to play. You know, I always tell people that 500 bucks is a really good sweet spot to spend on a guitar in terms of price versus performance. So if you're finally ready to graduate from that kind of first beginner guitar to something that has a little bit more character and will last you for years to come, then this video will be a good place for you to start your search. Keep in mind that for the sake of time in this video, I'll just be giving you the highlights, but if you wanna learn more, then you can find links to all the guitars mentioned throughout this video down in the description below, as well as some sound samples to help you get a better idea if the guitar is a good fit for you. So before we jump right into the recommendations, if it's your first time here, welcome to the channel. I release a ton of content aimed at helping you choose the best gear for your specific needs and budget. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to hit that subscribe button followed by the notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. Also, I'd like to preface by saying that this is a completely subjective list based on my personal opinions, experience, and research. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. You know, there are thousands of amazing guitars out there, especially at this price point, and I obviously haven't played every single guitar out there. That said, I have been playing guitar for over 11 years and I used to run a small online eBay reverb guitar shop. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what most people are looking for in a guitar, especially at that kind of beginner to intermediate range. And if there are any guitars that you think are missing from this list, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I always love checking out new guitars and if I think it's good, I might actually add it to my full written guide that you can find over at guitaradvise.com. And if you have any questions throughout the video or like a personal recommendation from me, also, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. But for now, let's talk about my picks for the best electric guitars under $500. So the first guitar on my list is the PRS SE Standard 24. And this might be my favorite guitar of the entire list. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a huge PRS fanboy. I've owned over half a dozen PRS guitars over the years and you can actually see me playing them in many of my guitar covers on this channel. I've owned several PRS SE guitars, an American-made PRS CE Bolton, and now I currently own a full American PRS Core Custom 24. And while I don't like to hoard a lot of guitars in my tiny living space these days, you'll always find at least one PRS guitar in my collection at all times. The thing I love the most about PRS guitars in general is just their attention to detail and quality control. Out of all the PRS models I've played, I can honestly say I've never played a bad PRS guitar, whether it's a lower end SE model or a top of the line PRS core guitar. And the PRS SE Standard 24 is no exception. This guitar comes in right around $500 at the time of recording this video. And at that price point, the SE Standard is the brand's entry level model, meaning it's the most affordable PRS guitar you're gonna get. Unlike many other guitar brands, PRS doesn't really make any of those really low budget guitars around the two to $300 range. And I personally believe that this is the case because they felt that $500 is the absolute minimum they could get away with when it comes to manufacturing and selling a guitar that actually meets the quality standard that they're happy with. Now I mentioned that the SE Standard is likely my personal favorite of the entire list, so let's talk about why that is. First, I'll give you a really quick overview of the key specifications, but then we'll talk about what they actually mean to you as a player once you get the guitar in your hands. So in terms of specifications, this guitar features a double cutaway solid mahogany body, maple neck with 24 frets, rosewood fingerboard, and a wide thin neck profile, as well as PRS's iconic bird inlays. For pickups, this guitar has two PRS 8515S humbuckers with a push-pull pot for coil splitting and PRS's own molded tremolo bridge system. So I know that was just a quick run through of the specs, but just as a reminder, if you want the full details, then you can find a link to this guitar down in the description below. So now let's talk about some of the things I really like about this guitar. And the first thing is its playability. So the overall design of this guitar is based on the American PRS Core Custom 24, which is PRS's claim to fame. Only this guitar is a more affordable version that's stripped down a little bit and doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles. It has a really classy, almost vintage look, but has some modern elements such as curves, contours, and belly cuts that make it really ergonomic and easy to hold, unlike other older classic designs like a Les Paul. On top of that, the neck on this guitar is very comfortable to play on. It's a maple neck with 24 frets and an authentic rosewood fingerboard, which is worth mentioning because many other guitars in this price point are now starting to use rosewood alternatives such as Laurel or Jatoba, which in my opinion just aren't quite as nice. 
The neck features PRS's wide thin neck profile, which is based off of their pattern thin neck profile that you'll see on their higher end American models. And I really like this neck because it's thin enough to play those fast leads and solos and whatnot, while still feeling pretty substantial in your hands when you're playing chords and such. It's not nearly as thin as like an Ibanez, and it's not as chunky as a Les Paul. It's a, it really strikes a nice balance in between the two. Since this guitar has a double cutaway design, and a deep car for your hand, you can easily reach the higher frets. So if you're a lead player like myself, you should have no problems at all. Another nice touch is the white binding around the neck. Not only does it look great, but it does a good job of covering up those rough fretboard edges that pretty much all guitars at this $500 price point will have. So now let's move on to another thing that I really like about the SE Standard, which are the pickups. The SE Standard uses PRS's own 8515S pickups, which again are the affordable versions of the 8515 pickups that you'll find on the American models. These pickups are essentially clones that are modeled and EQ'd to sound like the originals. And this is pretty much a common trend that you'll find with pretty much all guitars in that $500 price point. It's not until you start spending upwards of seven to $800 where you'll see guitars have actual name brand pickups like Seymour Duncan's or DeMarzio's. That said, the 8515S pickups are some of the best sounding pickups I've heard when compared to those other kind of in-house pickups used by other brands. These are really versatile pickups that are good at low, medium, and relatively high gain. The thing that I like the most about them is their clarity even at high gain. You'll notice that a lot of cheaper guitar pickups will really start to sound muddy as you crank up the gain. But with these pickups, I could still make out all the notes when playing chords, even when I turn up the distortion. That said, one thing to mention is that while these pickups are versatile, they don't necessarily have the highest output. Meaning, if you're someone who exclusively plays at high gain, like heavy metal, genty kind of detuned stuff, then you might want to find a guitar that has pickups that are more suited to that. Either that, or you can always just swap out the pickups afterwards to say Seymour Duncan's or something. That said, the SE Standard can pretty much handle anything that you throw at it, whether it's rock, jazz, blues, country, or pretty much anything else. In terms of value, I think this guitar definitely punches above its weight class. And just to put it into perspective, the PRS SE Standard 24 basically has identical specs and performance to its older brother, the PRS SE Custom 24, minus the Play Maple Top. And that guitar costs upwards of $800. So I really think that goes to show how much value is packed into this guitar. In my opinion, if you're someone who doesn't know exactly what they want and just wants a jack of all trades guitar that's a good bang for your buck, then you should definitely consider the PRS SE Standard 24. You'd be hard pressed to find another guitar in this price range that competes in terms of just quality and performance. That said, if you're someone who has a particular style, genre, or sound that you're looking for, whether you're a heavy metal player, country, or blues, then keep watching because you might find something on this list that's a better fit for your specific needs. The next guitar on my list is the Squire Classic Vibe 50 Stratocaster. You know we had to mention at least one Stratocaster style guitar. The Fender Stratocaster is probably one of the most iconic guitars ever made, right up there with the Gibson Les Paul, and to this day is still one of the most popular guitars out there despite being relatively unchanged since the very beginning. Some of the greatest guitar legends in history made their name using a Strat, such as Jimi Hendrix, Eric Johnson, David Gilmour, Jeff Beck, and many, many more. But for those of you who aren't in a position to drop several thousand dollars on a vintage American Fender Strat, Stratocaster, the Squire Classic Vibe Stratocaster is definitely an affordable option that I think you should consider. For those of you who don't know, Squire is owned by Fender and it's their subsidiary brand that manufactures more affordable versions of Fender guitars. And since they're actually owned by Fender, Squire guitars can use official Fender designs, meaning they're not knockoffs and these guitars are essentially the closest you're going to get to a Fender without breaking the bank. And overall, I think this guitar does an excellent job of capturing that look feel and sound of an authentic Fender Strat at a fraction of the price since this guitar only comes in at around $430. So let's talk about it. In terms of specs, the Classic Vibe Stratocaster features a double cutaway solid pine body, C-shaped maple neck and fingerboard, 21 frets with a 25 and a half inch scale length and a nine and a half inch fretboard radius, three Fender designed single coil Alnico pickups with a five-way blade switch, and a vintage style synchronized tram. Now let's talk about what makes this Stratocaster unique and who this guitar would be a good fit for, starting with the sound. So the Stratocaster has a very iconic sound. It's known for having a very bright and jangly tone. Also, strats are often described as having a kind of tight and snappy sound when you play them. And that is mainly due to their pickups. The Classic Vibe Strat has three single coil Alnico pickups, as well as a five-way blade switch, which allows you to swap between the pickups, giving you a ton of options for different tones that you can make. And since this is a vintage guitar, these pickups have a much lower output than you'll find on most modern strats, like the Fender Player Series. That, on top of the fact that single coil pickups typically have lower output than humbuckers in general, means that this guitar will really shine at that kind of low to mid gain range. 
If you're gonna be playing blues, jazz, country, pop, or soft rock, then I think this track could really be a good option for you. Overall, it's a pretty versatile guitar and a safe pick for those who wanna dip their toes into various genres of music. However, if you're a hard rock or metal player like myself, who typically plays at high gain, then this guitar probably isn't going to be the best fit. The thing with single coil pickups is that when you turn up the gain, you'll start to hear a lot of noise and hum, which really isn't that pleasant. Instead, you'll wanna look for something with at least one humbucker pickup. It's kind of just common knowledge that vintage strats really aren't designed for metal. But other than that, the Strat is pretty versatile and can produce a wide variety of tones. Now let's talk about the playability. So this guitar's design is pretty much identical to a real vintage Fender Strat. It's a tried and true design that's pretty much been unchanged since the 1950s. It has a simple ergonomic shape with curves and a double cutaway design, making it really easy to reach the higher frets. And it's just generally a pretty comfortable guitar to hold. Moving on to the neck, this guitar has a maple neck and fingerboard with 21 frets. And I feel like most people will find this neck pretty comfortable. However, one thing to mention is that this is not a particularly fast neck. On this particular model, the back of the neck and the fingerboard have a glossy finish on it. And I'm personally not a huge fan of the gloss since I think it can get sticky and kind of hard to maneuver around, especially if you're someone who tends to get sweaty fingers when you play. But it's by no means a deal breaker and really kind of comes down to personal preference. Some people really like the look of the glossy fingerboard and the glossy coating actually helps prevent the maple from wearing out. Another thing to mention is that this guitar has a pretty rounded nine and a half inch fretboard radius which is pretty standard on a lot of Fender guitars. This makes it really easy and satisfying to play chords. However, the rounded fretboard radius means you won't be able to set the action very low without getting fret buzz, which can make the guitar a little bit harder to play. Also, they're not the best for bending, so you might find that note choke out if you're someone who tends to incorporate a lot of heavy bends when you play. And as a side note, this guitar only has 21 frets, so if you're a lead player who likes to shred and play fast solos high up on the fretboard, then this guitar might not be the best choice for you. But with all that said, if you're looking for that iconic vintage Fender Stratocaster sound, then this is the closest you're gonna get to the real thing if you're on a tight budget. So the next guitar on my list is the Epiphone ES335. So similar to how Squire is owned by Fender and makes affordable versions of their guitars, it's essentially the same story for Epiphone, only for Gibson guitars. The Epiphone ES335 is modeled after the Gibson ES335, which is the guitar that really pioneered semi-hollow body guitars in general back in the 1950s. It's an iconic design used by guitar legends such as BB King and Chuck Berry, and the Epiphone version really gives you that same look and feel at a fraction of the price. In terms of specifications, this guitar features Features, a double cutaway semi hollow body mahogany round c-shaped neck 22 fret indian laurel fingerboard two alnico classic pro pickups and a lock tone two nomadic bridge so getting into my overall thoughts of this guitar first and foremost i think this guitar is absolutely stunning i love the cherry red finish very reminiscent of chuck berry's red gibson es335 and overall i think this guitar does a great job of capturing that classic look in terms of playability, I think this guitar is pretty comfortable compared to most other Gibson design guitars, that is. Since it's a semi-hollow body design, it's a relatively light guitar, which makes it good for long sessions. That said, it's a pretty big body without many contours or a belly cut or anything, so I feel like people with a smaller frame might find it a bit uncomfortable resting against their body when it's on their lap. Moving on to the neck, I feel like this guitar has a very comfortable and responsive neck and really feels good to play on and its double cutaway design makes it pretty easy to access the higher frets as well. Something to keep in mind is, like many affordable guitars in its price range, this guitar uses a laurel fingerboard instead of actual rosewood, which isn't my favorite, but I feel like most people won't be able to tell the difference, so it's really not that big of a deal. In terms of sound, as with most semi hollow body guitars, the ES335 is known for producing kind of a darker, more resonant and airy sound, and you can really feel the sound resonate throughout the body as you play it. The Alnico Classic Pro pickups are modeled after the American Gibson ES335 pickups and really shine at that low to mid gain range, but can also be played at higher gain as well since they are humbuckers. In general, I think this guitar is awesome for blues, jazz, and rock and roll. So if that's the type of sound that you're looking for, then this guitar could be a really good fit for you. And again, this guitar can handle high gain fairly well, but definitely wouldn't be my first choice for something like metal. Overall, I'd highly recommend this guitar for people who are interested in that Gibson ES335 look and feel, but don't have three grand to spend on that guitar. There really aren't too many other close alternatives to the ES335 in this price range, at least in my opinion. So the Epiphone is probably gonna be your best bet if you want this style of guitar. So the next guitar on my list is the ESP LTD EC256. This guitar is essentially an affordable version of the ESP Eclipse and strongly resembles that of a Les Paul, but with more of a modern metal twist on it. And in my opinion, this guitar actually improves upon the original Les Paul's design in several different ways, but more on that in a bit. This guitar comes in right at the $500 price point, and I decided to put this guitar on my list over, say, an Epiphone Les Paul, because I honestly think that the EC256 outperforms any Epiphone Les Paul that you'll find in this price range. 
In terms of specs, this guitar features a single cut mahogany body, three piece mahogany neck with a thin U neck profile, 22 frets with a Rosa Jatoba fingerboard, ESP design humbucker pickups, and a tunomatic bridge. Now I mentioned earlier that this guitar features some nice improvements when compared to a typical Les Paul. And that major area of improvement in my opinion is the playability. If you've ever played a Les Paul, then you'll know that they're notoriously known for not having the greatest playability. You know, they're heavy, clunky, not ergonomic, hard to reach the higher frets, and so on and so on. And it's kind of just something that you have to deal with when you want that iconic sound of a Les Paul since the guitar design is never gonna change simply due to its legacy. That said, the EC256 has some really nice design elements that make it a lot easier to play, which is great for metal players who wanna shred. And that's clearly the intended audience for ESP guitars just in general. First, the guitar has a slimmer body, which makes it more lightweight and easier to hold, which is good for people who play long sessions or gigs. I can tell you from firsthand experience, if you've ever played a vintage Les Paul standing up, it's really heavy for a guitar and can take a huge toll on your shoulders after a long session. The EC256 body also features some nice contours and a belly cut, which makes it much more ergonomic and comfortable against your body when it's resting on your lap. Also, it has a sharper cutaway for your hand. You won't have any issues accessing the higher frets. Moving on to the neck, it features a thin U neck profile, which is one of my favorites. It's clearly designed with shredders in mind as the thin neck is fast and just plays like butter. If you're someone who's gonna be soloing a lot or you're like me and have small hands, I think you'll like this neck a lot. It's really easy to wrap your hands around and just maneuver up and down the fretboard. The only downside in my opinion is the Jatoba fingerboard, which is a cheaper alternative to rosewood. And it just doesn't quite feel as nice as actual rosewood, but Again, it's hardly a deal breaker. This is kind of a common thing that you'll find on a lot of guitars in this price range. The next thing I wanna talk about are the pickups. So this guitar uses ESP design humbucker pickups. These are kind of like their own in-house pickups and they're clearly designed with metal players in mind. They're pretty high output pickups. So if you're someone who's primarily gonna be playing at high gain, then this guitar could be a good fit for you. Overall, I don't think these pickups are the greatest in the world, but they certainly get the job done. In my opinion, they don't offer quite the same clarity and versatility as say the PRS 8515 pickups that we mentioned earlier. Earlier, but they're still really good for metal and hard rock, which is clearly the intended audience for this guitar. Also, I find these pickups a tad on the bright side compared to something like a Les Paul, which is known for having kind of a darker, warmer tone. But in general, I think these pickups are adequate enough to handle most types of music. But honestly, it's clearly a metal guitar, just from the look to the feel to the overall sound. So if you're looking for a single cut Les Paul style guitar, or you're a metal player, then this guitar is definitely something that you should consider, as I think it's the best Les Paul style guitar at this price point. So the final guitar that we'll be taking a look at today is the Squire Classic Vibe 50s Telecaster. Again, similar to the Squire Strat that we talked about earlier in the video, this Squire Telecaster is an affordable version of the iconic Fender Telecaster. The Tele is a legendary guitar that's been around since the 50s, and it's also one of the most unique. There aren't too many guitars out there that can really replicate that classic tone of a Telecaster. So let's talk about why the Squire Telecaster made my list. In terms of specifications, this guitar features a pine body with a glossy polyurethane finish, a maple C-shaped neck, 21 frets with a maple fingerboard, Fender design Elmico single coil pickups, and a three saddle vintage style bridge. The main reason why I think you should consider this Telecaster is the tone. You'll probably hear this from anyone who plays a Telecaster, but this guitar is known for its iconic twang due to its Alnico single coil pickups. It's really popular among country players, and there really aren't other guitars that can get this distinct tone like a Tele can. So if you're a country player, then this guitar is really a no-brainer. In addition to that, the Telecaster is one of the most versatile and dynamic sounding instruments out there. It can sound bright and jangly, it can sound dark, it can sound a little bit in the middle, which makes it great for those who play in a band with multiple guitar players, because I feel like you can tweak the sound of a Tele to complement anything really. Similar to a Strat, since these are single coil pickups, it's really going to shine in that low to mid gain range, making it a great option for country, jazz, blues, soft rock, and stuff like that. You can crank up the gain a bit, but you might need to turn up your noise gate to reduce the hum, meaning this guitar still wouldn't be my first choice for hard rock or metal. But overall, I think this Telecaster is a great value for the price coming in at $430. So there you have it guys, those are my five picks for the best electric guitars under $500. What'd you think? Agree? Disagree? Do you feel like I'm missing anything? Be sure to leave me a comment down below with your pick for the best electric guitar under $500. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm as it really helps me out in growing this channel. And with that said, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.